Thank you for being here. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. I do want to take a look at the possibility of an earlier tropical storm or hurricane as we lead up to the hurricane season, which starts June 1st. And I don't mean this in a scary way. I uh, do this channel for uh, preparation for safety. Uh, last year we had barrel, of course, absol absolutely devastating that formed on the earlier side of the season. So I need to watch everything behind the scenes, but I like to show you everything I'm seeing and kind of looking at as well as we uh, do this together as we approach the hurricane season. Now, uh, the month of March is usually very quiet. It's not the hurricane season. Now we're in April. April, and occasionally you get a system that forms out there. Only seven on record though. Uh, but as we get into May, which is next month, we're just a few weeks away from that now. Almost every other year on record, there is a name system out there. So you can see how things ramp up very quickly. And that's why I'm watching everything at this point. We're just a couple weeks away, a few weeks away from getting into May, leading into the hurricane season, which officially starts June 1st. So one of the things I look at are the water temperatures, but that is just one of so many ingredients. You look at the uh, Caribbean right now, running at 83 degrees Fahrenheit, 28 degrees uh, Celsius. That is conducive for a tropical storm or hurricane to form. Why don't we get a lot in April if the water temperatures are warm? Well, because what I mentioned up above our heads, it's kind of hostile winds are kicking around in different directions. The atmosphere is not conducive for a hurricane or tropical storm to develop right now, but the pattern changes pretty quickly as we get deeper into spring and get closer to summer. Now, it's not just the water temperatures. It's how they're doing against average. Well, they are running well above average in parts of the Western Gulf and the bay over toward the Bay of Campeche right through here. You see this uh, darker kind of a orangey shading. Those are near record water temperatures, warm water temperatures for this time of year in much of the Caribbean running above average. So that's not necessarily a good thing. But as I mentioned, that's just one ingredient. Uh, you need warm water temperatures plus uh, some moisture out there in the atmosphere to at least have the chance of a storm to form. Well, as we look at that April rain outlook in the Caribbean where you have this green here, we're going to have above average rain. Doesn't mean we're going to have a, a ton of rain, but above average rain this month in the uh, Caribbean. And you see where you see that yellow shading? That's below average rain. As we work our way into May, same thing, above average rain. And that's why we do have a chance of seeing some Thing develop even before the season starts. It does not mean that's going to come at us, right? Uh, this is just the possibility of something developing because we have the warm water temperatures that I just showed you running above average and there's going to be a lot of moisture out there. So simply it wouldn't be surprising if something next month tried to form. Typically though, typically though, if something forms in May, it's usually on the weaker side. Sometimes it could be a really good thing because we need to get some rain in some spots. But with that said, there are a couple ingredients in place, the water temperatures and watching uh, the uh, amount of moisture out there that lend itself to the possibility of something developing before the season even starts. Now, one of the keys I watch, and I watch this uh, as well with Hurricane uh, Barrel, uh, is the heat content. It's not just the warm water temperatures that I showed you, but you see here this yellow shading right across the Caribbean. That's the heat content, and that's not a good thing because that's telling me the water is not only warm at the surface, but it's warm pretty far down below. So as a tropical storm or hurricane passes over the water, it just uh, more uh, warm water feeds into these systems, right? The heat content is a very critical thing. As I know it's a little sciencey. We'll get into it further uh, as we get into the hurricane season. But if you get a system passing over this high heat content near Jamaica, for example, that could really lend itself to something strengthening rapidly. And we've seen that together the last few years. So yeah, the water temperatures are above average. The heat content is building in spots and there should be some available moisture, but there's other things out there. How hostile the winds are above our heads. The Saharan dust sometimes creeps in, right? So just know that I'm watching all of these ingredients as we lead into the hurricane season. There's no telling of where things will eventually go yet until they develop. Once they develop, I get a good handle on the steering conditions and where they go. And I'll give you a heads up if something's going to be near us or if something simply is going to stay away and I'll be able 
able to pass along that good news as well. Andrea, Beryl, Chantel, some of the names on the list for this season, Jerry, Karen, Lorenzo, Melissa, as we get down the list. This is the new list for the season. The list recycles every six years unless a name storm is retired. Sometimes a name is retired if it's really a big or impactful storm. And then uh, there's an organization out there that adds in a new name. So you may see some familiar names. And there's another list for the Eastern Pacific. There's a different list. Uh, for different water basins around the world. So you may hear some other names out there, but this is for the Caribbean, the Gulf, and the Atlantic. That's the Atlantic Basin. That's the list of names as we get into these, uh, this uh, upcoming hurricane season. Now, also watching some rain around. The United States, a big severe weather event that is going to happen today. I'll touch on that. Uh, Southeast Caribbean for us, watching out for the increased chance of rain. It is tied into these winds. So I'll show you everything in a second. The winds today are going to be really uh, picking up. They're going to be stronger. Kilometers an hour and miles per hour on the map. Really gusting where you see these white shadings popping up. Uh, coastal sections, uh, basically Southern Caribbean over toward the ABC Islands. Turks and Caicos over toward Haiti, Dominican Republic. Public, Puerto Rico north side and then as you get back towards Central America you see these white pockets in here even into tomorrow things kind of build those are winds that are going to be gusting to 80 kilometers an hour or about 50 miles per hour. So they're going to be really gusty. I'll show you how that kicks up the seas in a moment. But you see more of these uh, white shadings right in here. So the next few days, starting today, it's been breezy for some of us already, but the winds are going to build today, tomorrow, and then right into Friday. You see on Friday, still some of these white shadings around. By the weekend, the winds will subside some, but you see some of those gustier winds we're going to have in spots, giving you the heads up on that. And that does correspond to higher seas, I'll show you that in a moment and watching out for some of the rain that may feed in. So here's some of the extra rain, Guyana and Suriname. We'll watch out for that easterly flow. So for the most part, some fast moving showers possible. St. Kitts, Nevis, St. Lucia, Barbados, Dominico may get a couple. Jamaica will have a couple spotty showers as we go over the next couple days, but that rain gets very close to Trinidad. It's just kind of a wait and see as we go through the end of the week, how close some of this rain will get. But you see it kind of inching our way in Trinidad by the time we get into Thursday. We do need to get some rain in spots. We'll see if it does uh, shift in. There's a better chance by Friday and Saturday especially that some of the rain feeds in. You still see some of the extra rain there, mainly to the south of Trinidad, over toward Guyana and Suriname. Fast moving showers elsewhere and building some as well. Costa Rica, Panama. This is on Friday. We'll get some scattered showers. Guatemala and El Salvador. But as we flip over into the weekend with those strong winds, overall you see right there in Trinidad, we'll see a better chance of rain on Saturday. We'll see if that pans out. I'll give you those updates the next few days, but really watching this pocket of rain here in the southeastern Caribbean that will be getting closer Friday into Saturday. And look how the waves uh, really build. Here's meters, here's feet. Basically, uh, the Atlantic waters, Caribbean Gulf, they're, they're all going to be on the high side the next few days. This is on Friday. And you see some of the yellows popping up, three to about four meters. 11, 12 feet in spots. This is Saturday and generally it persists. So we're going to see some rough waters giving you the heads up on that. Now we've seen some severe weather overnight back toward parts of the United States. Severe weather outbreak uh, right in through this spot. Watching Kentucky, Tennessee today, parts of Mississippi, significant tornado. So we're thinking of our friends elsewhere as well as we go throughout the day uh, there with this system rolling in. These fronts this time of year mainly stay to the north of us in the Caribbean. Look how things build. A shot of snow uh, trying to work in Ontario, uh, Quebec. You see it right here over toward New Brunswick, uh, Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island as we get into Thursday. There are some of the uh, heavier weather right back through parts of the U.S. And then this here is Friday clipping us by at least early in the day, tomorrow night into early Friday in Newfoundland with that chance of snow and persistent rain in the United States. Not only a severe weather threat in spots, a significant flood threat as well. Bahamas, we are too dry, right? A lot of us need the rain. These just zooming around, these rain totals are not high. If you get a shower the next couple of days, Cayman Islands, Jamaica, uh, Haiti, we're looking under an inch, under 25 millimeters of rain, just getting brushed by some fast moving showers in most spots. That rain chance not too high in Guile, Antigua, and Barbuda. This is where we're going to be watching. Here's Barbados, uh, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, the Grenadines, uh, Grenada, but Trinidad. By the weekend, we could see some of this rain that gets closer. There are the higher totals, extreme northeastern Venezuela, Guyana, and Suriname, some spots 
spots around 100 millimeters of rain or four inches of rain. It'll pick up a little bit as well. Costa Rica, Panama, not as much Nicaragua, Honduras, and Belize. A little bit more Guatemala and El Salvador and Mexico. We're mainly on the dry side, but there's that moisture building right up through the United States, uh, northeast Texas, and then swinging up to the north with some heavier flooding rain at times. So about a, a 30, 40 percent chance of some spotty showers, maybe a rumble of thunder for us in Jamaica. Rain chance stays low for us today in the Cayman Islands, only a 20 percent chance. It is low for now in Trinidad, but we are going to be watching together how close some of this rain will get for us as we work our way into the weekend. Barbados rain chance on the low side, about a 30 percent chance of an isolated shower in St. Lucia, 20 percent chance in Grenada, rain chance staying low, a 20 to 30 percent chance St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Isolated shower, Martinique, isolated shower the next couple of days in Dominica. Rain chance stays small, 30% chance in Guadalupe over the next two days. In mainly dry Antigua and Barbuda with the winds though, a fast moving shower will be possible. St. Kitts, Nevis, uh, Montserrat, 30% chance of a shower, just a 20% chance Anguilla and St. Bart's, a 20% chance St. Martin, Sabin, and Stacia over the next few days. Puerto Rico, we could get a couple storms today, scattered areas of rain and a few thunderstorms and a 30% chance in the U.S. and British Virgin Islands. Rain chance staying very low in the Bahamas. We are mainly dry, mainly dry leading into the weekend in the Turks and Caicos. Hit or miss shower storm though possible uh, from the Dominican Republic back toward Haiti. Rain chance is actually going to drop off later this week. We get back through Belize, a lot of sunshine, and while we've been dry, we've been hot, right? Those temperatures heating up. 20 to 30 percent chance of a shower. Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire with those winds around. I'll be watching your comments. Some gusty winds. Rain chance on the high side. Guyana, as I highlight it, on the high side in Suriname. That's the rain that we'll be watching getting closer to uh, Trinidad. Uh, 20 to 30 percent chance right across Cuba. 40 to 50 percent chance building later this week. Costa Rica, Panama, a better chance of some scattered showers and storms. Nicaragua, a 30% chance. Uh, mainly dry in Honduras, isolated chance of a shower. 40% chance Guatemala and El Salvador were dry right across Mexico City. Rain chance on the low side, the uh, Yucatan Peninsula. About a 20% chance northern Colombia. You go a little bit south, though, better chance of rain in Colombia. Uh, building some in northern Venezuela by the end of the week, mainly northeastern Venezuela and Bermuda watching that front that just moved on by. So with that, gusty winds the next two days, tracking some of those areas of rain, watching the southeastern Caribbean for some increased rain, or at least the chance of it by the weekend, and we continue to get closer to hurricane season. I hope you have a really good day ahead.